Hello children and parents, uh, this is our for our Crash and Ignite Ace children and we're going to keep looking at Moses. So far we've seen him uh, be pushed down the river, rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter. We've then seen him go into exile and then God to talk to him through the burning bush. And this week we're looking at him obeying God and talking to the king of Egypt uh, and trying to get the king of Egypt to release the Israelites. So, um, and on what comes after that. So, so sit down, relax, grab your juice. Uh, and let's read this together and find out more about God's servant Moses. Moses and his family set off on the road to Egypt. Before they arrived, he met his brother Aaron, just as God had promised. Moses told Aaron all that God had told him. First, they called a meeting of the Israelite leaders. The God who called Abraham, Isaac and Jacob knows all about your unhappiness and is going to rescue you, Aaron said. He promised to give the descendants of Israel a land of their own. Now he is going to lead you to that land. A great cheer went up, yeah! The people were excited and happy. At last, their troubles were over. Next, Moses and Aaron asked for an audience with the king of Egypt. Wow, imagine that. The Lord, the God of Israel, says that you must let his people go free from this country, Aaron told him. Who is this God? The king asked rudely. I don't know him and I shall certainly not do what he says. He turned to his servants. Get those lazy, idle slaves back to work. Then he gave new orders to the Egyptian foreman who were in charge of the workers. Up to now, you have provided them with straw they need to make their mud bricks strong. Now they must go into the fields and cut their own straw and see to it that they make as many bricks as they did before. It was an impossible task, but when there were too few bricks, the foreman whipped the Israelites and treated them worse than ever. The people of Israel were bitter and angry. God was supposed to be rescuing them, but things were harder, not easier. Their leaders went to Moses and Aaron and told them what they thought of them. Moses was in despair. He told God just how worried and disappointed he was. Wait, God said, I will keep my promise. But because the king will not obey me, he will have many hard lessons to learn. My own people will also begin to understand how great and powerful I am. So God had promised Moses that he would do many terrifying things to make the king and the people of Israel too understand that he was able to rescue his people. Moses and Aaron went back to the king and warned him that if he did not obey God and set free his people, all kinds of misfortunes would come to Egypt. But the king simply laughed, ha ha ha, and refused to pay any attention. God, though, kept his promises, and nine terrible disasters struck Egypt, all at God's command. After each one, Moses went to the king and gave him the chance to change his mind and obey God. But every time, the king continued to say no. First, Moses raised his stick on God's orders and the life-giving water of the river Nile, which supplied all of Egypt, changed to thick red oozing liquid. Then frogs came jumping out of the foul waters and hopped everywhere into the houses, the beds and the ovens. At first, the court magicians copied Moses, showing what wonderful tricks they could perform. But they could do nothing to cleanse the Nile water or get rid of the frogs. The king was feeling sorry for himself. He promised Moses that he would let the people go if their God would only take away the frogs. Moses prayed to God and the frogs died. But the moment the trouble was over, the king changed his mind again and said no to Moses 
and to God. Then God sent stinging, whining gnats and fat buzzing flies. Each time the king promised Moses that if God took away the plague that he would let the people go. Each time Moses listened to the king and each time the king changed his mind once the disaster was over and refused to let the Israelites go. Cows, horses and donkeys died from disease and the people themselves broke out into painful red and swelling boils. Ugh. But still the king said <laughs> no. A storm broke and huge hailstones rained down like bullets. But still the king said no. A plague of hungry locusts came like a black cloud and devoured all of the crops. And after that, the lamb was plunged for three days into black, inky darkness. In Goshen, the people of Israel were kept safe from these troubles. God had proved that he was stronger and greater than all the gods of Egypt and their clever musicians. But still, the king said no. The king said no. So next week we're going to look um, at the final plague set about and, and see what happened to the Israelites over there. But it just shows how powerful God is that he could send all these things down. Uh, and that the Egyptian king just kept saying no or changing his mind. Um, but ultimately God would win that battle as well. We're going to learn about that next week. But this is a story of Moses obeying God um, and God fulfilling his promises, which is really good. Have a good week, guys. Um, we miss you and we'll see you soon. Bye.